Hey everybody, as we know with FedNow Instant Payments, except for special circumstances, the payment is supposed to post to the receiver's account immediately. Well, just how long is immediately? Kind of reminds me of the song, How Soon Is Now? The Smith fans out there, you guys get that. Real quick, instant payment fund intended. The new Regulation J subpart C rules create procedures to make it possible for real-time end-to-end fund transfer completion. How's this work? An end user, which could be an individual or a business, initiates a payment by sending a payment message to their financial institution through an end user interface, a phone or a tablet or a computer, and that is actually outside of the FedNow service. Now, the end user's financial institution, or maybe that financial institution's service provider, then submits the payment message using the ISO 20022 format standard into the FedNow service. Okay, now the FedNow service, they validate the payment message and they send the contents of the message to what we call the receiving participant, which is going to be the receiving bank or the receiving credit union. Now that receiving participant, they must confirm that they intend to accept the payment or they can actually do what we call accept without posting, but we're not going to get in that today. We're going to say that they accept it. Now upon this confirmation, the FedNow service debits and credits the designated master accounts of the sending and receiving financial institutions or what we call settlement at the bank level. The FedNow service then sends a payment message to the receiving financial institution, that receiving participant, with what we call an advice of credit, and an acknowledgement gets sent to the sending participant that settlement is complete. Everything's moved, the money's moved around. This FedNow instant payment, it's final. It's irrevocable. It's final and irrevocable at the earlier time of when the amount of the payment order is credited to the receiving bank's settlement account or when the reserve bank sends the receiving bank a confirming payment order or notice of credit. Now here's where immediately comes in. We are of course, again, assuming that there are no problems with the payment, that there are no legal restrictions in place that would prevent the receiving participant from making funds immediately available. That's really important for this scenario. We're saying it's basically what we call the happy path of payments. According to the Fed's new Regulation J, subpart C rule, it requires the receiving bank, the receiving participant, to make funds available to the beneficiary of the Fed now payment immediately upon acceptance of the payment order over the service, over the Fed now service. So how long is immediately? Well, you have to read the Fed commentary in Regulation J to be able to answer that one. Because you see, after reviewing the comments on whether the rule, and that's comments from the industry, on whether or not the rule should specify time parameters clarifying the term immediately as used in the funds availability requirement, well, the board, they decided not to adopt a time period for the final rule. What? 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 Yeah, they decided not to adopt the time period for the final rule, recognizing that the time period needs to be considered though. See, immediate may constitute to actually be a term that evolves as the industry evolves and changes over time. Yes, they said that the time frame that would be defined as immediately can and probably will evolve. Immediately can change? Well, according to the Fed's commentary, it can. And folks, it really will. So the board decided to retain necessary flexibility by not defining the term in the new subpart C and subpart C does not entitle the beneficiary to enforce the immediate availability requirement against the receiving bank. So what is immediately then? This is getting so frustrating. Well, even though immediately isn't officially defined, Receiving financial institutions, you're still going to need to make funds available, well, immediately. <laughs> yeah, he did it. Think of it like commercially reasonable. It's a moving or evolving definition, but you are still expected to meet that definition. The way I think of it is that you should look at this more like don't delay funds availability unless you have an 
well, a really legitimate reason to delay funds availability. Also, don't delay hitting that subscribe button. That's right. You don't want to miss another class on what's happening with Regulation J or any other of the things in FedNow and electronic payments. And if there's a payments question you want answered, email me, kevin at paymentsprofessor.com. Here at The Payments Professor, we do all we can to make learning payments fun, engaging, and entertaining. For now, class dismissed.